Um, this is um, a Vespa PX 150 um, is the engine we have chosen uh, because it's basically it's one of those um, uh, engines you can get parts for anywhere you know 150 top end and carburetor and exhaust and all is, is pretty universal in, in the countries that uh, we'll also be going in India and Iran and wherever they all have 150s um, it's the size of Vespa wants to be I say um, pretty robust durable engine and so we chose a standard 150 there's nothing special about it um, the exhaust is probably the only thing it's a sip 2 exhaust that's that's about it now uh, going through the bike uh, the most important things to me were things like uh, suspension now the suspension on the front and rear isn't anything um, special other than it's good strong um, this is Escort actually, this is an Indian shock on the front, very robust, doesn't need to be some sort of racetrack, you know, uh, gas cylinder one, and it's easy accessible because we've left this, um, the main mudguard off for a few reasons. Easy access to this if we need to change it and other things, but also a mudguard, if you have an accident, it, it tends to get tangled up into the bodywork, and I've left this little hugger, it's, uh, you know, easy to uh, throw off or repair or, put back on something else um, on the rear suspension again it's just uh, an aftermarket adjustable I think it's uh, a tubo and the thing about it is this rubber grommet here is a hole which is a, it gives you access to the top of the rear damper uh, to change it again easily change it without having to take all this gear off you can get in there take your box off get in there and change the suspension which I suspect is something that he will need to do um, time and again because the bike's very heavy it's very heavy with all this gear on it and um, he's got to yeah watch off watch out for the suspension another thing I've done is strengthen the stand the stand is is very uh, strong it's got the obviously the stand feet on it that are metal but uh, underneath we have we get my colleague here to <laughs> lift the bike over underneath the stand on top here we've got these um, brackets here these are drilled out to seven mil by the way from six mil got this here plate here which is also an anchor for your bungees but underneath you've got a big metal plate here I don't see if you can okay. see that so the seat it's one of the posty bike seats single saddle and um, it's got a lock here um, it's got uh, access obviously to the, the petrol and the oil there is oil injection on this it's um, it's not got the window here because um, I I blocked it up and I it's 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 blocked up inside and it's blocked up here because they actually get smashed or damaged and cracked when they sit out here so uh, he, I guess he just has to to look into his oil tank and make sure it's topped up um, yeah but these seats are really comfortable um, loads of uh, foam on that and uh, going to be very useful for long trips in between um, cities wherever he is then uh, on the handlebars okay so what these are are lml select handlebars now these are a metal handlebar and i chose these because um on its maiden voyage young ross had a little accident and um fell asleep on the wheel and ended up in a ditch uh, luckily enough not too much damage was done but he did smash the handlebars the original aluminium handlebar cracked just in here and uh, because of that we decided to go with this all steel handlebar so underneath this plastic of the t5 tx lml select type handlebar is um, a steel body all the way through now obviously it's not 100 um, percent um, foolproof from from being damaged but it's certainly stronger than the aluminium setup um, we've also gone with this original speedo from this bike inside the old t5 uh, lens it was just easier to do that way and um, yeah now we, we wanted to keep that speedo anyway so um, the bike through the oh front brake you may notice this is actually a, a 2003 PX 125, which is 150 head on it, but we've done away with the disc brake. Now that's just 
for simplicity reasons and, and, and maintenance reasons. The, the, disc, the, the, the disc is just something that um, if it goes wrong and you've got to deal with fluid and change forks and that, it's just messy. So a cable operation and uh, it's the old EFL setup. And if you look on the front, it's got like um, the EFL, you remember these in the mid 80s, the, the EFL thumb adjuster or sort of the uh, little adjuster that they had down here. And it's, it's got this um, drum brake system, which is uh, really good actually. If it's maintained well and set up well, it's, it's, it's a very strong braking system. Now, um, on the po we've got some LEDs on the front here, which he's got a switch to, to turn on and off, just in those areas where if um, he needs extra light, he's got a yellow or uh, orange light and white light, and um, he needs to clean the lens, he can take them off, clean the lens. Other features, the crash bars, of course, and these, these, these ones here that hug the bike all the way down are actually drilled and bolted to the bodywork here. And you can see also, we, we just put this um, uh, extra plates on the floor here instead of runners. Obviously, these are much stronger and easier to uh, maintain. Now this here, uh, side crash bar hugs the body and uh, did protect the bike when he did have a little spill on it, protected everything on it and kept it straight. Um, here on top of the toolbox is his USBs for charging the phone. Very important thing these days is to have your phone charged up and uh, the bike's uh, electrical system is a, it's actually a vape DC electric system throughout and um, he will need that, that battery uh, for quite a few things, mainly charging the phone um, and his LED lights. Ignition is not off the battery though, the ignition is independent, so the bike will always run, obviously, if the battery's flat. I think that's most of it. He's got a nice screen here, which certainly helps. Got some mirrors on the screen. There's an old um, Spanish screen. Very useful. Just throws change or keys or anything. And he'll have his phone here as well for um, sat navin and uh, that'll be mounted on here before he goes. Nice robust box from Givy. Not too big, not too small. Um, most of the stuff that he'll be carrying will be between his legs here as a bag for his clothes. So that there's just sort of the best place to carry any sort of um, heavy stuff as such in between the legs. And here, just where the passenger seat is, uh, the bulk of uh, maybe some tools, and um, just utensils, any heavy stuff in here. Light stuff is on the front. So on the front rack, he will have um, sleeping bag and tent. That would be for light stuff, really. Um, I think that's it around the bike. The tires are nothing special. Yeah, the, tires, the, the tires are sp <coughs> just the Michelin all weather S83s. I mean, he's not going off-road with this bike. I mean, uh, my initial um, thoughts were like building a Parry Dakar style bike, with, which was just a bit overkill because he's not going off-road. It's more long distance. So I'd done away with what I was doing was a, some sort of bar in between here and uh, bash plates underneath the engine and that. I mean, that was just overkill. I, I left those things off. Um, it's more about the, the, the journey and carrying a lot of gear, which they don't do in Parry Darker bikes, and carrying it um, and distributing that weight evenly with uh, most of the bags here and here. Um, yeah, and keeping it simple, simple and robust and easy to maintain uh, is the key here. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Thank you. We wish him well.